What is up guys? Welcome to my channel. This is part three of my Pedal 101 series. And in this video, we're checking out compressors. Now compression is one of the most widely used effects and some form of compression has been applied to nearly every guitar sound you have ever heard. But it's often a very misunderstood pedal and that's mostly because people don't understand how it works. All the compressor is really doing is looking at the signal that you're playing, reducing those high transients, therefore bringing everything else up so that your loud stuff and your quiet stuff sit closer together so that you have a more uniform signal with reduced dynamics. One of the main benefits of using a compressor is the added sustain that it gives to each note that you're playing. On some compressors, one of the actual knobs will actually be labeled sustain. And for me, with my setup at the moment where I'm playing without any actual backline and I'm going straight front of house with FRFR monitors pointing straight at me, using a compressor on, I'd say 70% of what I'm playing really helps control the dynamics coming from the Helix and helps get some, some of that sustain back that I'm missing from not having a real amp behind me. In the setup that I'm using at the moment, I actually use two compressors. I have one set for some light compression that just helps give me some sustain during solos and things like that. So the guitar is working a bit nicer with the monitors and we're getting some more natural sounding kind of feedback. The second compressor that I use is set much harder. It's giving me that quack and that slap kind of sound for any funk kind of songs or riffy bits that I end up playing. So there are five main controls when it comes to a classic compressor. So the first main control is the threshold and that is setting how loud of a signal the compressor should let through before it begins to compress. The second control is the ratio and that is saying for every dB above that threshold that we set we want to compress by a certain ratio. So no compression will be a 1 to 1 ratio, you can have 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, some compressors even go further than that. The next two controls are attack and release. The attack is telling the compressor how fast to start compressing that signal, so how much of the signal to start letting through before the compressor takes over and starts compressing. The release is the opposite. It's saying once that signal has then come back down below the threshold, how long does the compressor take to come back to zero? The final control is the makeup gain control. Because the compressor is lowering the overall volume of our signal, we then have to increase the output gain or the makeup gain to get our volume back up to where it was. And those are the main controls of a standard studio compressor. Things do get a little more simple when we take compressors into the guitar playing world. Now there are hundreds of compression pedals. Keeley 4 knob, Keeley 2 knob, Dynacomp, Boss compressors, Wampla Ego, Cali 76, JHS, countless boutique pedals. The list is virtually endless. But this is the SP Compressor by Exotic Effects. And it's one of my all time favorite compressors and it features on tons of Prospect boards. And the reason it's one of my favorites, not only does it sound awesome, but it's super simplified. There's none of the five controls that we had on the studio compressor. All we have are two knobs and one toggle switch. We have a basic volume control, a blend control, which allows us to do something which used to be quite complicated in the studio world, which is called parallel compression. And basically that's taking the dry signal and a completely wet compressed signal and blending the two together. We can do that super simple on one dial. And we have a mini toggle switch, which switches between high, mid and low levels of compression. Let's plug it in and I'll show you how it sounds. Okay, so we're in Logic. I've got my Sir Modern plugged straight into the SP compressor. That's going into the Arrow interface, straight into Logic and using Helix Native for all the guitar tones. I've got a clean tone dialed in. So let's engage the compressor and I'll slowly bring up that blend knob.
hopefully what you can hear there is it sounds like we've got a much louder signal, but what's actually happening is the compressor is hitting the front of the amp much harder and pushing that amp into a little bit of overdrive. You can also hear how much extra sustain we're getting just from the compressor pedal alone. So let's see how the pedal reacts into the front of a dirty amp. Hopefully you can hear how much extra gain we're getting just from the compressor pedal. You might also be able to hear how much extra noise the compressor pedal is introducing. Turn the volume up, then pedal off, then pedal back on. And what's actually happening there is, if you remember before we were saying that the compressor is actually going to bring everything else up so that our louder and our quiet stuff actually sit closer together, that also includes the noise floor. And that's an inherent problem with compressors. So it becomes a bit of a balancing act of finding an area where you've got a good amount of compression, but it's not creating too much noise. Whilst we've got the blend knob maxed out, I'll show you what those three levels of compression on the toggle switch do. Starting with the middle position or the lowest level of compression. Switch to the mid position. And now the highest level of compression. For me, that mid level of compression is just about right. It's not introducing too much noise, but it's giving me just enough compression that I need to make my playing that little bit easier and help the notes glue together a little bit more. So those are kind of basics or fundamentals of how a compressor works and some of the kind of sounds you can get from it. But what about putting it into practice? Here are a few well-known guitar riffs that use compression. Just wanted to add something. Since filming this video, I've actually been experimenting with using this compressor as an always on compressor, set to a light level of compression on the mid compression setting. It's just completely changed the way that I'm playing. It's 
made it much more like I'm playing with a real amp. It's added loads of sustain. I'm getting really nice feedback from the FRFR monitors and it's kind of made it easier to play. It's just opened up a whole new world of playing for me. Just another benefit of using compression in a live situation. So there you go, compressors done. I hope this has shed a bit of light on something that can be a quite misunderstood and quite a complicated pedal. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up below. If you want to watch another video on this channel, click right here. And don't forget to subscribe, you can do it right there.